In this program, we discover Turkey as a country of our compatriots. For many Kazakhstanis, this country became a second home, but was it able to replace their first homeland? Hello, behind my back you can see Istanbul, the legendary city. The thriving city located at the intersection of trade routes all at once in Asia and in Europe had always attracted migrants. Nowadays they still continue arriving in Istanbul where the population is growing steadily. and national composition of Turkey strikes imagination. Here there are more than 20 million Kurds dwelling, about 2 million of Caucasians, half a million of Arabs, 40,000 Armenians, about 70,000 Jews. Moreover, Turkey is full of Bosnians, Albanians, Circassians and Gypsies. Kazakhs are relatively few here. They were able to take root in the most different social positions to preserve their language and culture and at the same time to be absolutely modern. In this program we discover Turkey as a country of our compatriots. For many Kazakhstanis this country became a second home, but was it able to replace their first homeland? So that's the way the sudden Kazakh Kurultai starts in Istanbul. In this field, a variety of representatives of the Kazakh diaspora came against each other. They all reside in different parts of Turkey. Football is a real passion not only for Brazilians, but also of Turkish Kazakhs. Since yesterday, there is the football tournament here, where eight teams participate, which arrived from Istanbul and other cities of Turkey, where Kazakhs live. We have chosen football in order to bring our youth together. We, the Kazakhs of older generation, already know each other. Now let the youth know each other closer, get around and make friends. While introducing the youth to each other, we want them to stretch their helping hand, both at work, at home and in different circumstances. We want them to help each other, so that when they will start their own families, they could choose their beloved precisely from Kazakh families. That is the purpose we introduce the youth, and the most effective way to do that is football. Football is loved by everyone. Both young and fans are joining. Football in Turkey is more than a sport. The Kural Thai of Kazakhs is more than a formal event. Here you can meet delegates from all parts of Turkey and from all the clans and social classes. Think about it, eight teams comprising of 20 people, it makes already 160 people, plus fans. So in total, about 1,000 youngsters are coming. Besides, it is about sport. Thus, we advocate the sport, therefore it is for us the most advantageous option. Hussein, who moved here from China, also understands well the benefits from such gatherings of Kazakh diaspora. He waits impatiently for each such meeting. I played football since I was four years old. My father and brothers, they all played the ball. I like it. <laughs> Last year we took second place, we lost in the final. There was a penalty, but we could not score a goal, so we took the second place. 
We organize this tournament annually. The tournament is called friendly and fraternal, so that the Kazakhs could play, could be together. Many of them still don't know each other, therefore they organize tournaments so that we get to know each other and communicate. For example, last year I didn't know many Kazakhs from Turkey. I arrived here, started to get acquainted, to talk. For example, if before you hardly knew two, three people, now you know a hundred, two hundred, you recognize everyone. You ask about the father, whose son that is, you learn everything. You begin to know all about the family, who that girl is, whom all these guys play well. So that's it. I'm sorry, I have to start playing the game. During Kurultai, we always thank the Turkish people. Why? Because 60 years ago we were greeted by the Prime Minister Adnan Menderes. His grave is located in Istanbul. Then Turkey was one of the first countries which accepted Kazakhstan as the independent republic. Then the president of Turkey was Turgut Özal. The mausoleum of Turgut Özal and Adnan Menderes are placed close to each other. Therefore, we always lay flowers on the graves and read Quran. By this, we would like to give gratitude on behalf of the Kazakh diaspora to the Turkish people. And only after that, we return to conference room and start our gathering. was shown to us by Mansur Teji. He, like many elder representatives of Kazakh diaspora, studies our compatriots' Turkey relocation history. After going through a lot of troubles and hardships, the ancestors of the modern Turkish Kazakhs sought the refuge in China, then in India and Pakistan. But the unfavorable political conditions, unusual climate, alien culture and life of Kazakhs forced them to move on and look for other places to live. And in 1951, the Kazakh diaspora activists appealed to the government of Turkey for the resettlement permit in this country. A year later, such permission was granted, and the first Kazakh caravans finally set off to Turkey. The historian Abdul Wahab Kara is the representative of third generation of Kazakhs living here. His family relocation story began in 1930, when his grandfather and his family were forced to leave the Altai to migrate through China and Pakistan, and then they settled in Turkey. <laughs> Our grandfathers, thank God, are very smart people. Our ancestors came from Kopal Chinjan from Altai back in 1933. Crossing Tahlai Mahan, the Himalayas, India, Pakistan and after the decade reaching Turkey, their path to success was very long. When they are asked how many people decided to migrate during the first strike, some say it was 18,000, the others say 40,000. In 1952, out of 18,000 people, only 1,800 reached Turkey and Harmed. Ten people out of nine died on the way. Someone died from the hands of enemies, some from natural disasters, from the cold, someone from infectious diseases, and only 1,800 people survived. The Turkish government has assumed the costs for the Kazakh refugee settlement. They provided them with the Turkish citizenship, gave apartments. But so tired of city life, the Kazakhs decided to purchase four acres of land in the vicinity of Istanbul. Many journalists till today cannot understand how we got this land and how come the Kazakh Aul is located on the territory of Istanbul. This land was bought with the hard-earned money of the Kazakhs, and now it seems that those 35,000 square meters of land were ours eternally and were transferred by our predecessors from generation to generation, from father to the son. When we first arrived here, there was a bare step. How do you think why we moved to this step? The friends of our deceased father always remembered Altai with nostalgia, its magnificent mountains with dense pine trees. All this beautiful picture did not match the way of life our forefathers had used to. 
After acquiring those lands, the eldest members literally lay down on the ground. Their joy and delight knew no bounds. After all, their dearest wish became true. The eldest person, Dalil Khan, said, Well, enough to lie down, let's work, let's build houses. Once upon time we lived in Altai and nothing was granted as it is. When he was building this village, I was his secretary at that time. After that, we already started receiving money on our open bank account. Houses were built as per the standard. For every house, they were paying 5,000 lire. And peasant children from 150 families donated 5,000 lire each. We organized a big feast for 1,000 people in honor of the opening of the Kazakh Aul. When we were building the Aul, we wanted to name it as Kazakh Kent. Kent means a big city. When Aul was built, we named it Kazakh Kent. Official opening of Kazakh Kent was held in August 15, 1973. The first houses were built in the street named Altai as a memory or a reminder of the homeland. But the desire to live together was dictated not only by nostalgic feelings. The older generation of immigrants sought in whatever means to preserve Kazakh identity. When we will die, let our children stay after us and let them be mindful that their fathers and grandfathers had built these houses. Let the Kazakhs' name remain in their memory. Leaving behind the hardships of the difficult days of resettlement, the Kazakhs built their own Kazakh world in Turkey. But at the same time, they had been always closely following all the events that were happening in their homeland in Kazakhstan. The elders decided that we need to come together and to open our own community. So that our Kazakh youth living in Turkey does not forget their traditions, their roots, culture and native language. In our community, there is a building consisting of six floors. On the upper floors, we hold Kazakh weddings. There are reception of visitors and guests. There are also meetings. All that is connected with the Kazakhs is organized in this space. Whether it's gatherings, business matters, holidays or reading the Quran, all events take place here in the community. Now Kazakhs got together, they support each other in celebrations and during funeral repast, during fasting. They all know each other well, they communicate. The Kazakhs of Europe is also an integral part of the Turkish Kazakhs. In the 1960s, during personnel exchange, our compatriots, our fellow brothers left from here to there while being contracted for work. Even in Europe, all doors are now open for us. You know that they hold annual conventions. Every year all people come together. This is a great opportunity. In Turkey, Turks encourage many Kazakh guys. They say that we arrived from the Central Asia, that we are truly Kazakhs, we are also Turks. We came from Altai. They respect us as people who arrived from the land of their ancestors. As of today, whatever we ask, they are readily willing to give it to us. This is happening even nowadays. The proof of the Turks' respect is the street in Istanbul named after Abay Kunanbaev, also the school which bears his name and the monument built in his honor. We have long wanted to give Abay name to the street.
Our current president Erdogan was then in the city administration. He was Akim. He loves the Kazakhs very much. When we reported him about it, he gave his consent. With the words, in the future it will be a wonderful street on the shore. There will be 35-40 store buildings here. There will be hotels. He personally came to us together with his deputies and together we gave the name to this street. The monument to the Kazakh genius Abai Kunanbaev in the courtyard of the school bearing his name has become a city landmark and pride of Turkish Kazakhs. Journalists and visitors from Kazakhstan don't leave unless visiting this place. This monument was specially made in Kazakhstan. That time it was presented to us by the ambassador of Kazakhstan in Ankara, Kairat Saribaev. We are so grateful to him for this. The monument is very beautiful. It became a real decoration of the school. When we talk about the elementary school named after Abai, here 1,500 pupils study. When it was opened, it was initially the elementary school. Last year, the education reform passed and, as of now, this is high school. At the moment, 1,500 pupils study here. Most of them are Kazakh children. We agitate Kazakh parents living here so that they send their children to this school. When there are a lot of students, we organize Kazakh learning language courses. The school director already provided his consent. Truly speaking, he says that there are very few students nowadays. In each class, one to two children from Kazakh families spread out across the classes. If there is full Kazakh class, we will teach them Kazakh language, Kazakh dances, songs, kui. We will give them everything they need. Our current ambassador, Jean Sid Tuimibayev, also supports us in this. The history professor Abdul Bahab Kara works at the University of Arts named after Mimar Sinan. He is one of those who devoted his life to studying the history of the Kazakh people. Even in his youth, he read magazines and books of Mukhanov, Awezov, and other writers. He translates books from Kazakh into Turkish and from English into Kazakh. In 1995, I started to work at the university named after Mimar Sinan. When I was defending my thesis, I had chosen the topic of Mustafa Shokai. I wanted to study his life story and get to the truth. In the year 2002, in Paris archive, I found the confirmation that Mustafa Shokai didn't cooperate with Nazis. Then I successfully defended my thesis and the same year the book was published in Turkish. Now I will show you. This is my thesis. It was published the same way in November 2002. It is called The Flame of Turkestan, Life and Struggle of Mustafa Şokay. Sometimes the history subject seems easy. For those who is not an expert in the field of history, this area doesn't seem difficult. But it's not true. The history, sociology, arts are very important sciences. I would say for Kazakhstan, the profession of historian is as much important as the technical professions. Why? We get political independence in one day, but the conscious independence does not come in a day. This will require decades. For example, on December 16th in 1991, Kazakhstan declared its independence and that's all Kazakhstan is independent higher education in Turkey is considered to be expensive and therefore not accessible to all only 10% of applicants pass the competition since no privileges in the higher education system exist here by the way the Kazakh youth here are in good standing as per the words of professor Abdul Bahab Kara the modern youth tries to study well now the time is special 
Education is very important and not only for Kazakh youth, but the whole world struggles for it. Now it's the time of science, information, technology. So today the person knowing well English and technologies can always earn his living. Thanks God, our Kazakh youth is talented. This fact is recognized by Turkish teachers. The Kazakh families in Turkey live together during three generations. For example, grandparents, mother, father and then the baby. These kids see their grandparents, absorb their love. The atmosphere in which the child grows affects his intelligence. It affects his education. Those children being brought up close by their grandparents grow as good kids. In big cities, children don't have grandparents. They grow only with parents, so my wife is a primary school teacher. There are also Kazakh children. Then the Turkish teachers told us that our children are talented and well-educated. They know how to treat the elders. It was 2-0, to zero, scored. We are delighted. Now we are in the semi-finals. Two minutes are left. If the game ends with 2-0, to then we are in the semi-finals. Tomorrow there is another play. God bless. In Turkey, all play well, all give great preference to the ball. For example, in Kazakhstan, the focus is on wrestling. In Turkey, the first place is with football. That's why from the very early years, from when they are five years old, children play football in the yard. That's why everybody loves and watches football matches, which are broadcasted on TV. Many even dedicated their lives to football. This year's tournament is called Yer Janibek. Every year we give the name of the Kazakh hero to the tournament. Why? It helps in the formation of historical consciousness among young people. For example, this year the tournament is held under the name Janibek Batir, the following year under Kabanbay Batir. When we give names of brave men as Elhan Batir or of public Kazakh figures as Mustafa Shokai, Alihan Bakihan, we hope that young people will learn more about their history, their roots. We try to rise the spirit of national consciousness so that the younger generation preserves its self-identity, national traits, features and traditions. I can say that the happiest Kazakh diaspora is a diaspora in Turkey. We don't interfere with anyone, no one is oppressed. Nobody inhibits us if we want to go to Kazakhstan. We can travel freely when necessary. Or there is no question of why we bear our last name. On the contrary, the Turks respect you as a Kazakh. The Kazakh is the foundation of the peoples of Central Asia, of nomads. Our ancestors came from there. They respect us, saying that we have taught them many things. Before moving to Turkey, the nomads had the opportunity to go to America, but the elders came to the conclusion that there they would be well fed and shot, but would quickly forget their language and traditions. So then they had chosen Turkey. Our fellow compatriots are glad with this decision of their ancestors and thank Turkey, which gave them a hug many years ago and allowed them to preserve their cultural values.